Hi, I am Abdullah Bualim from York University, and I'll be talking about defocused deep learning using dual pixel data. This work is done with my advisor, Michael Brown. So here is the overview of the talk. I'll begin with an introduction where we first talk about camera shallow depth of field and how the defocus blur is formed. Then we will talk about dual pixel sensors and how they are related to defocus blur. After that, we introduce existing defocus deep learning methods and place our work in regard to prior work. Next, we present our dataset along with the novel approach we followed for data collection. Our proposed defocus deep learning method using dual pixel data will be presented later, followed by our experiments and results. And at the end, we conclude our work. Sometimes imaging with a wider aperture is required. For example, wider aperture increases the image exposure to light in low light conditions. Another use case for a wider aperture is to capture scenes that require faster shutter speed. Wider aperture is also useful for capturing less noisy images. However, capturing an image with a wider aperture will affect camera depth of field in which it gets shallower as shown here in this example. Shallow depth of field results in an image that has a spatially varying defocus blur, and this blur is usually undesired. Therefore, our goal in this work is to reduce the effect of undesired defocus blur. So now, we will talk about dual pixel sensors or DP sensors. These sensors were designed by Canon to assist in camera autofocus. These sensors are designed with two photodiodes at each pixel location on the sensor. The DP sensors produce two sub-aperture views of the scene, denoted in this work as left and right views. These views are mainly used to calculate the appropriate lens position to focus on a particular scene region and are discarded afterwards. In our work, we utilize DP sub-aperture views to reduce the unwanted defocus blur. To the best of our knowledge, we are the first who leverage DP views as input to deblur the image. Here, we alternate between the left and right dual pixel views, and the amount of motion present is correlated with the amount of defocus blur. Therefore, DP views provide a good cue for defocus deblurring. Defocus deblurring has been addressed to be a hard problem, and existing methods address the problem in two stages. The first stage, these methods estimate the defocus map from an input blurred image as shown here. Then, in the second stage, they use off-the-shelf non-blind deconvolution methods guided by the estimated defocus map in order to deblur the input image. So our distinction from the prior work is the use of the DP data available at capture time, where we apply a single stage defocus deblurring. As for our dataset, we capture the images using Canon 5D Mark IV DSLR camera. It is the only camera currently available that has adjustable aperture and provides the ability to save and extract full-frame dual-pixel images. Using the Canon camera, we capture a pair of images of the same static scene at two aperture sizes, f4 and f22, which are the maximum and minimum apertures possible for our lens configuration. The image captured at f4 has the smallest depth of field and results in the blurred input image IV, whereas the image captured at f22 has the largest depth of field and serves as the all-in-focus target image denoted as IS. More details about the capturing procedure can be found in the main paper. For the image with a spatially varying defocus blur IB, we provide the left and right dual pixel views. In total, we captured 500 scenes. Each has four images, IB, IL, IR, and the corresponding sharp image IS. As for our deep learning method, we adapt a CNN encoder-decoder deep model that takes the DP views 
as input to estimate a sharper image. So let's take a closer look and see what's inside this CNN-based model. We adapted a symmetric encoder-decoder CNN architecture with skip connections between the corresponding feature maps. Such architectures have been demonstrated to be very useful for image and video deblurring tasks. So by looking at the architecture we have, our DPDNet utilizes the DP images IL and IR for predicting the sharp image IS star. We train our model using MSE loss between the output and the ground truth. More details about the training procedure and data pre-processing can be found in the main paper. To evaluate our proposed DPDNet, we report results using traditional signal processing metrics like the peak signal to noise ratio PSNR, the structural similarity index SSIM, and the mean absolute error MAE. We also incorporate the recent learned perceptual image batch similarity LPIPS. We compare our DPT net to other existing methods for single image defocus deep blurring. We also introduce a variation of our DPD net that accepts only a single input image IB and uses exactly the same architecture settings along with the same training procedure. We refer to this variation as DPD net single. Based on all metrics, our method that utilizes the DP data has the best quantitative results. These results tell us that DP data is the key that made our DPD net outperforms others, especially the single image input DPD net single, in which it has exactly the same architecture but doesn't utilize the DB views. Here we present qualitative comparisons of different deep learning methods. We also present zoomed in cropped batches in a green and red boxes. Our DPD net method significantly outperforms other methods in terms of deep learning equality compared to the ground truth in the last column. Here, we also show animated example of our deep learning results. Another animated example of our results. We also tested our DPD net on images captured with Pixel smartphone camera as shown here. One thing worth mentioning is that the Pixel smartphone camera has limitations that makes it more challenging to train our DPD net. The main limitation is that these cameras do not have adjustable apertures, so we are unable to capture corresponding sharp images using a small aperture as we did with the Canon camera. Nevertheless, these visual results demonstrate that our DPD net is able to generalize and deblur images that are captured by the smartphone camera, where these images have not been seen by the network during the training. To conclude, we have presented in this work a novel approach to reduce the effect of defocus blur. Our approach leverages the DP data that is available in most modern camera sensors, but currently being ignored for other uses. We also show that the DP images are highly effective in reducing defocus blur when used in a data-driven DNN framework. We have also captured a new image dataset consisting of a blurred and sharp image pairs along with their DP images. Our experimental results show that leveraging the DP data is very useful and provides state-of-the-art quantitative results on both signal processing and perceptual metrics. We believe our captured dataset and DB-based method are useful for the research community and will lead to additional ideas about both defocus deblurring and applications that can leverage data from dual pixel sensors. Scan a QR code to visit our project GitHub repository to download dataset and code. And for further details, you can visit our project page by scanning the QR code on the right. Thank you.